right. Welcome to another episode of Becoming a Techno Wizard. And I didn't get to do two videos this week, but doing my one. And um, I wanted to just, you know, talk about my uh, stuff that I've been working on. So right now I'm working on a waiver for my company for here now actually at work. Um, but before I get started with work, I wanted to go ahead and shoot a quick video. So yeah. Let me go ahead and show you what we're working with now. This is our current waiver, all right? So there's a number of problems that, that's going on with this waiver um, due to you know technical limitations when we first started this stuff. Our original waiver was on a completely different system. And then you know when we switched over our booking, we had to switch over waiver and all this other stuff is just a lot. So we ended up with this um, before I really you know got into design and everything like that. Uh, this is what they did. So basically they just put like our waiver in a light box and the sort of embedded thing. And uh, the problem with this is that already, this is not mobile friendly. So on people's devices, they can't really scroll. When they go to scroll, they scroll on the whole page. So I might be able to show you what that looks like. This is a huge problem with us. And every time we try to, especially now with COVID, we try to tell people, hey, do it on your phone, you know, but they can't. So we have to make sure we keep our tablets clean and do it here. Um, it's another reason why they don't do it at home, even though we tell them, hey, do your waiver first. So you, are, you can already see it doesn't look very good, but um, let's see. Yeah, it's, e I mean, it's easy for me to scroll here because I can scroll in the middle. But on people's devices, right, they're trying to scroll and they go down like this and it just goes straight down. All right, it doesn't even scroll in this middle part here. So this part is staying here. And when they scroll, it's more like you're scrolling on the page itself. So they go like that, right? And they don't even get to see the bottom of the waiver where they have to actually sign. So that's the first problem that we got to solve. Um, now the second problem is closely related is this basically right here. You got these two buttons, adult and minor. So first of all, you come up, <laughs> you have this problem of our, where people need to sign a waiver and we're telling them, you know, you know, sign your waiver and then they go to adult because of course they're adults, but they have minors with them, right? They have young kids with them. Those are usually the, it's the kids that's gonna be playing. Um, and so what we actually need them to do is go to minors and sign in for them. Like when you go to minors, you can sign your information at the top, parent or guardian, and then you sign the minors information. You add a minor, you sign their information. Um, so the problem with that <laughs> is that um, people don't see, uh, or maybe they do see it, but they don't really understand, right? It says adult or minor, and they're an adult, so they're going to click adult. But when you go to adult, it's just for you. There's no ability to add, in, add a minor. So <laughs> that's a huge problem right there. Um, let me get back to the regular thing here. So that's what I'm solving right there. Another big problem right there. And then the next problem is that uh, even when they do click adult or minor, or rather minor, they don't see this information. Like they start putting in their kids information right here, even though it clearly says parent or guardian. So you have to make this more clear somehow. And then you go to your participant, and then this is where you can put the children. Um, and we have a, required email, required email slot here, form field. So this is a problem with, you know, it's not really a problem in America because technically you can do this, but it's just bad practice, right? And I was telling my team that uh, before is that, you know, yes, we might want emails in order to send them, you know, news and, and event stuff and all this stuff, coupons or whatever. But the problem is that if you require people to put your email in, then Nine times out of 10, they're not gonna look at it. They're not gonna open it. So what, what's actually going on here, and this is something you can look up. <laughs> I have to show my team like the data here and, the, and the, the articles on this is that when people don't open up your emails and we have a very low open rate, you're, um, the places like Google, Gmail and different you know, email providers, they blacklist your email. And so, it's automatically categorized as spam. You know, that's why spam is so good nowadays and our spam catchers are so good. Like most people rarely ever get spam in their, in their email, even though the email is still cluttered, 
usually because of newsletters and all this other stuff that they sign up to by accident or somebody sells an email or whatever. But most people don't get like spam, actual spam. Um, and the reason for that is because, you know, Google automatically or most email providers automatically blacklist certain email providers. If your emails are not getting opened, it will automatically be blacklisted. So that's the number one problem. Number two is that even if your email isn't blacklisted, it's not going to be ranked high in their in their um, you know their inbox. It's not going to go to the inbox area. It's going to go to like like in Gmail, you have promotions or newsletters and all this other crap where people don't go to. Like mine is absolutely filled with like promotion, all that other stuff. Like I, I rarely ever go there. <laughs> Only when I when there's something coming that I know it's coming and I and I want to open it. Um, but most emails, like I, I don't I don't open it. And that's where most people. And so if we if we require everybody to to have you know to put in their email, we might be having a huge list. But number one, we're going to have a higher high likelihood of getting blacklisted. And number two, it's highly likely to, just going to be put into a folder that nobody's ever going to look at. And so we're defeating the purpose of having an email section of having people input the emails. That's why I suggested that this is this this um, be optional because. Um, when people have to opt in to your service, then they're more likely to, to want to do it. It's because they want to do it, right? They want to get emails from you. So they're going to be looking for those emails. They're going to, you know, when they see those emails, they're going to open it up. That's why you have this double opt-in thing. Like that seems counterintuitive to, to getting more emails, right? Double opt-in, that's more work. But you want more work because that shows that, that shows you who is actually going to care about you, who actually wants your newsletters, who actually wants your emails. And so, you know, when you have that double opt-in or whatever, people are going to mark it as important. They're going to put it in their main inbox. So every time you get an email or send an email, they're going to get it. They're going to read it. They're going to engage with it. And so that's why I was telling my team that we need to pay attention to that. And plus, we don't even send most, uh, we honestly just don't send many emails. We have a birthday coupon. Every now and then we try to do an event. And this is maybe like three or four emails a year. <laughs> and that still costs us though. If we're sending thousands of emails to all of our providers, I mean, all of the people who signed up who had to sign a waiver, which is, which is literally every single customer, then that's going to be a waste of money. So I was telling them, you know, on just multiple regards, it's just better to have an optional email. So that's another thing that I had to solve with this, that I solved with this. And then um, you have, you know, this thing here that really makes no sense. And it's really hard to do on mobile to check or uncheck it. And then, it's, and again, it's bad practice. And then we have gender have you know this male female and it says other another bad practice and we're we're super like um open people like we want to <laughs> to be to be open to people we want to have we want to bring we want everybody to feel welcome when they come here and putting something like other is not good for people who, who do who are non-binary or you know just don't want to put like male or female or something like that other is just not a good thing there um so that's another thing I'm solving here. And then I, I wanted to have, you know, reduce these these forms um, because this can be a lot on, on mobile. These are all like one column and goes down and down and down. And then you have to add minors and there's even more that you have to scroll through. Um, so that's another thing I wanted to, you know, fix as well is that all these options here. And um, I was looking up some things and it was saying, you know, for birthday is usually better to have like a, a field to where people would just type it in is usually faster. Um, so that's what I initially tried to do. So that's what the, these are all the things I, I needed to solve. And some other things I discovered is that when people are signing these waivers, when they put add minor, right? It shows it here on a desktop, but like on the phone, for instance, or even on the tablet, when you hit add minor, it doesn't do that. It, does, it, it, it just pops up above it. So you don't even, you can't even see all these, you know, fields that's popping up. So people be adding minor and it's like, where, where's the field, right? It's not popping up. Um, so it doesn't here, it, it works here, but it doesn't work on, on mobile. So that's yet another thing that I needed to solve. So these are all the main problems that I was looking at solving when I um, started to redesign our waiver. And it was important to solve these because uh, again, it's bad practices and it adds a lot of time. A lot, most of the time people don't do the waiver ahead of time. And so when they come in, we're like, oh, did you do your waiver? Nope, okay, do it now. And that adds another five, 10 minutes onto something where people are already coming late usually. Like most people don't come 15 minutes early like we tell them to. 
they come either five minutes early or just right on time or even five minutes late. And so now they have to add another five to 10 minutes to do a waiver. And then um, and I even get to showing my actual designs, but I need to point out those problems because that's the most important part of being a designer is pointing out the problems and why you need to redesign something. So anyways, this is where I started at. I tried to find some inspiration for what's a good waiver, you know, what's a good form field and stuff like that. And there's it was, it was some stuff for form fields, but there's not really a stuff, like I wanted to see if there's anything for virtual reality, just off chance because, you know, when people come here, they have an expectation. Like you walk in and it's like screens everywhere, it's LED lights. So I wanted to see if I can, you know, um, design a waiver that has like that futuristic feel to it. Um, so this is the only thing I really found. This is more UI than anything else, but um, I also wanted to see what kind of forms they're having, you know, and they have this stuff like that, but I we don't really need that. Um, like we usually just ask people or we used to have something like this, but we realized most people don't really understand how they found us. Like they say that, hey, they just found us on Google or whatever, right? But most people weren't searching for us, so how did they find us? Um, and we try to see if it was it the ad, like was our ads working? And most people don't even know if they've seen the ad. Like they say, oh yeah, um, no, I wasn't an ad, but we, when I look like, or when I, um, I did some like ethnographic research and stuff like that, or just really try to see how people found this. And it was not, and if, if it wasn't for, it was either the ad on, our, on Google, like it would search up, you know, virtual um, arcades or things to do in Atlanta or something like that. And our ads would work, you know, it would show up. But they don't, they don't even see it as an ad, which is, which is interesting, it's troubling. But, um, and the other way is, is just that they're searching up things and we're popping up on like lists that we, like, that we try to put ourselves on, like TripAdvisor or Yelp or something like that. So it was no point really asking people for this because people usually gave us like incorrect information um, and that you know, led us down the wrong path in terms of advertising and stuff like that. Um, but anyways, this is, I, de I, I do like, so I do kind of like this, this, this uh, UI and I'm gonna try to see if I can make it like that for my high fidelity. But anyways, so I, I started um, go ahead and you know, designing different things, simplifying the, the, the concept and everything like that. So the first thing I did was number one, try to summarize the waiver. Cause again, most people, most people don't read waivers. Most people don't read terms of service or anything like that. So I wanted to simplify it to make it easy for people to understand what they're agreeing to because technically they have to read it. <laughs> um, and technically we have to have, have it there. But if nobody was reading it and then they ask questions like, oh, do I have to have to pay for this if I break it? Or, you know, um, do people get sick or, you know, stuff like that, or, you know, uh, taking videos and stuff like that. The waiver has all that information. So I needed to show people that information. Um, this is something that our team was worried about in terms of legal. Like, does, does this, is this legally binding or something like that? Like, what if we, we say stuff here that's not word for word like it is in a waiver, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I wanted to make sure people, you know, still opened up that waiver so they can still do that. But, and I put this somewhere later in the summary, but basically I said it's not, you know, legally binding. So it, it's still some, it's still sort of, it's not exactly a gray area, but it's still a, a thing that's not usually done. Um, so we just still have to research more into that uh, in terms of the legal side. But I did actually see some examples of other people doing this online, as well as the entire service, um, terms of service didn't read, that tries to, you know, summarize terms of services for people. So it's, it's a trend. It's a, not really a trend yet, but it's a, it's a thing. <laughs> um, we want to add username at one point because, you know, people don't want to have their name sometimes in the games birthday, all this stuff. And this is what I was talking about. Like email should be optional and you should tell people information about what they can get. So if you tell people, hey, you're going to get birthday coupons, new games, you know, blah, 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 then people are more likely to do it and they will be looking for it. They'll be, they'll be interested in actually getting your emails. Um, it's another thing I want to do for, you know, just being more open is having a gender slider instead of just, you know, male, female and all that stuff, because, you know, gender is on the spectrum. So I wanted to have a, a, an actual spectrum here. And um, it's a cool idea. Um, our team liked it. Um, other people liked it. But the problem is that we couldn't, our technical stack wasn't, isn't able to get this sort of information because we would have to store this as like a decimal or something like that. And we just don't have that capability in our, in our database right now. So I had to scrap that right there. Um, 
is another idea I had of I mean, like leaving these as check marks. So they would even be shown um, at first, but if you want to add it, then you can just press it and then, you know, you can type it in. Um, another thing for the full name and the birthday, but some problems I saw with this are, are that I, we came up with for the, in terms of technical feasibility is that number one for full name is that people have, you know, these weird, I'm not gonna say weird, but people sometimes have different names. Like if they have an apostrophe in the name or a space in their name or something like that. Again, our database is not able to, you know, um, separate those. Like it's not able to say, hey, this is part of their last name or part of their first name or something like that, right? So um, it will take some, uh, some time, a little bit. It won't take a whole lot of effort, but it will still take some effort to kind of fix up our database so that it can, it can automatically, you know, not just separate first name and last name, but also deal with those edge cases. And there's quite a bit of edge cases where we have people with like apostrophe in their name or space in their name or something like that. And uh, it's just not worth the time. So I ended up keeping that as two spaces instead of, instead of uh, the one, which is still better because again, this one had three, <laughs> like a middle name and we never use that. Um, now, I, I like this idea too of just typing in it because it usually is faster. Again, the problem is that is user error. You know, is how many times will people, you know, type in the wrong thing or put it the wrong date in or, you know, even though we say month, date, year, people might still do it by accident or, you know, any number of problems that you can come up with, it can happen. Um, and our, my dev, our developer, you know, mentioned that. So I kept this as different, different fields, but I, I asked them if we, I'm going to see if we can make it so it's automatic. So as soon as you put in the two digits per date, it automatically goes to the next field. So that way you don't have to like click the new field and then hit enter and click the next field or something like that. It just automatically, you know, brings you along. So hopefully it'll be a good kind of compromise there. The different ways of doing dates. Um, again, like that scrolling is not a good thing because I can't tell you how many times people scroll down like, oh man, guess I'm old, I gotta scroll. <laughs> um, so this, I'm just looking at different ways to try to fix this. I haven't really thought about it too much yet, but I'm still thinking about that. Um, I put 18 up here because again, people on our current waiver, people will like start putting in their child's name and then they put in their birthday and they're like, why is it, their birthday isn't here. I'm like, are you under the adult or the minor? <laughs> and they try to put their minor under the adult only. So I wanted to, you know, just make it super clear that this is not for the kids part. But I do think this form of the waiver in general is better because it automatically, like there's no buttons you have to press to open up this waiver. It's, it's automatically adult participant. So I think it's gonna, and we still have to test it, but I think it's gonna automatically reduce the, the, the mistakes people have when they're trying to, you know, um, put in that information. Um, this is another thing that we saw, like I, I wanted to have the option for people to add an adult here because when, um, when people are signing for these waivers, sometimes they have other adults in their group, right? And it will just simplify the process if the other adult can just sign in on, onto the same waiver instead of having to open up their own waiver or their, on their own device or something like that. But the problem with that is legally, we have to make sure every adult reads the waiver. And technically, you know, you can't say that they did unless they have like their own waiver um, rather than sign it on to somebody else. So. Uh, we had to be we had to I had to take that out as well. So yeah, just I just I was just iterating on this on um, two columns, one column, and moving stuff around and stuff like that to see how how it felt. Um, put in this is what I was talking about here with the gender, male, female, non-binary, and um, ended up taking out the username because again, uh, well, it's not a technical problem like it could be done in our database, but uh, well, it, it is a technical problem. It, it can't be. It can be. We can store it in our database, but we couldn't transfer it to our our launcher. And uh, we have like a um, a unique launcher system. So when people put on the headset, they're automatically in the virtual environment, so they can see like each other's avatars and all that stuff like that. But we couldn't we couldn't we haven't figured out quite yet how to transfer data over um, super well. Like um, networking is it's a lot of technical stuff. But we had to like network the names. We haven't figured that part out yet. But um, when we do, maybe we can add it in, but right now there's no point. Maybe, if anything, we could just have people enter their name into the, the uh, launcher themselves. But anyways, eventually got down to this. This is kind of like my final 
form <laughs> of the waiver. Um, if I was using a, a little grid system just to you know, put it on the same spot, but yeah, here we go. So again, it's not high fidelity, still technically mid fidelity is not good UI yet, but the UX is there, you know? So summarize the waiver and it has uh, information about like, this is not legally binding. You still have to read the waiver. Um, and then you have your form, you know, first name, last name, put your birthday in and it has information about here. So hopefully, I know people don't read, but you know, things pop out at you as you're, as you're typing in information. So hopefully they see things like adult only 18 and up, you know, um, add minor uh, down here. So even though people may not read it, some people do read it. Like I had a person the other day that literally sat through the entire waiver where they were line by line is talking to me like, why you want this? Okay, what's that? Okay, what's this? So people do do that. It's very rare, but people still do uh, still do it. And uh, again, this is the purpose here is for, is for if, if people are confused, if people ever do come up and they like, you know, they, they go through these, these dates and they're like, why is the, you know, why is um, the, the 2008 not here, right? It's because, you know, before they can even ask, before they even need to ask, they might see this out the side of their eye and be like, oh, this is ancient enough. So they don't have to embarrass themselves. They're like, oops, this is not for minors. This is for adults. <laughs> um, so yeah, <clears throat> again, we have to test this to see if this is actually gonna help, but I think it will. And then you have your option to put your phone. I'll tell you, and again, it's just, just telling people the reason for why we have this information, I think will go a long way. And, um, and, in, and then wanting to opt in and this, and just wanting to open those emails. So yeah, now you have, you know, the minors and this is not good. I might change this up just as, but again, trying to figure out more descriptive titles and stuff like that. But it simplifies it hopefully a lot. You add your minor. Um, one thing I added is that when you, when you do have the add minor button, it tells you how many that you added. So just in case, that we can't figure out what this bug is that's causing it to not pop up on your screen, like to not move the form field down, then at the very least, it'll, it'll have something here telling people that, you know, giving people feedback of that they, yes, they pressed the button and yes, it added a field. Um, so we still have to figure out the bug, but just in case it doesn't show up, that's there. Now, as you see, I did change it so that instead of having another button that you press, um, you have your gender here. And this is because, you know, it was kind of a trade-off. So we, we was wondering like, should gender be optional, right? We were thinking that it should be required or they were, my team was thinking that, that it should be required because, you know, we, we use that in our advertising, we use that in our um, data and stuff like that in order to see who was who coming here and, and, you know, who was playing and stuff like that. Um, but again, I think it's just not good practice to require people to put information in that we don't, re we don't really actually need it. And um, yes, we kind of do use an advertiser, but it's not, a, it's not a major thing. Um, it doesn't really determine what type of advertising we make. We already know our audience and we can see that from our booking information as well. So it's kind of redundant here. So uh, it's kind of a, a trade-off for both of us. So being that it's here, it's automatically there means that people are more likely to sign it up even though it is optional, but um, it is optional. Like it won't stop you if you don't put it in. Um, so yeah. That's basically it right there. Um, so that's the information we put in, male, female, male, female binary, and I prefer not to say. I just added that in just because even though it is optional, and even though people can leave it blank, people just might not want to. So <laughs> if they happen to open it, but they still don't want to say, they can just have that option. It doesn't really take away from anything. So no, might as well add it in. And then this is what happens if um, you know you miss something. And I added this because this is a major problem with our current waiver is that it doesn't tell you that you're missing something until you hit submit. So you can fill out everything in the waiver. You have like three, four minors in there and it doesn't say, hey, you missed you know, your email, you missed your, your, your name until you hit submit. So um, I wanted to add it so that as soon as you, you know, leave out of this field, it tells you, hey, you're missing this. And this is what it looks like. So it tells you what you're missing and what's going on there. And then I tried to, you know, do some mobile. So this is what it looks like on tablet. Pretty much the exact same thing um, because I already, you know, used a, I didn't use the whole desktop space. And then on mobile, this, this is what it might look like. Again, it's very ugly. I haven't messed with the UI yet, but I think it still looks, you know, pretty good. It's decent. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been working on. 
Um, if you have any feedback or anything that you want to add or ask about, let me know. Um, I'm always open to feedback and I'm going to build out a full, like an actual prototype so that we can test it. So, and then I can, you know, have my developer, I can ask our developer if, you know, what's feasible and what's not in terms of the interactions. And um, yeah, we're going to really see if this is better or not. Pre I'm pretty sure it is, but testing, you know, that's what, that's what makes it uh, real. That's what makes it, that's how you know if you actually solve the problem. So yeah, that's it. And uh, thanks for watching. Let me know once again, if you have any ideas, any feedback, um, or anything else. So uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> have a good day and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.